Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, hopefully you're having an amazing day. Let's kick this video off discussing AM5. Specifically, we're going to focus here on the motherboards for the Ryzen 7000 series. After all, it's all well and good you own the processor, but unless you have a board to put it in, it doesn't really help you too much. There has been a couple of very interesting rumours which have surfaced recently on the internet. First of all, Hassan of WCCF Tech has stated that both the X670 and X670 70E will be demoed at Computex 2022 that will be shown off. Now, to my understanding, I've actually heard from one of my sources that RDNA 3 will be mentioned at the show, as well as Ryzen 7000. So, for them to show off the motherboards as well does make sense. Further to this, we have the B650s. These will probably be announced at Computex, but will probably come later, maybe next year. At least that's what I understand. Further to this, though, Tech Power Up state that the X670E will be a special SKU. The E, naturally, will stand for extreme. Now, basically, the functionality of this will be identical to the X670. I'm going to read this verbatim. However, all of the X670E motherboards must offer PCIe Gen 5.0 connectivity to both the GPU and M.2 NVMe SSDs, or possibly slots, whereas the X670 boards can use PCIe Gen 4 instead. End quote. Now, to my understanding, AMD will also be uh, finally revealing Rembrandt for desktop at their upcoming event as well. And this is going to be one of the lines of processors that we're going to see for the AM5 motherboards, naturally. Uh, AMD, I believe, have even officially stated that, you know, they want DDR5 uh, supply to be more plentiful and, of course, the actual prices to drop. They've actually mentioned that uh, in public. So I believe that this is logical and that my source is probably correct here. From what I can gather, the B650 uh, in particular, is going to be more aimed at, like, OEMs. Um, and obviously, at the end of the day, you are free to buy what you need based upon your requirements for your system. For example, if you don't necessarily need a ton of fast storage and that type of thing, then it doesn't particularly matter too much if you're using your system for, like, business and you're throwing in, like, a Rembrandt-based CPU anyway. But obviously, if you need to do a crap ton of, like, video editing work and that type of thing, then you may care a little more. It's going to be very interesting, and we're way too early at the moment to know how direct storage is going to kind of play into this what type of you know differences nvme gen 3 4 and 5 drives are going to have um, again it's way too early to know so it's going to be very interesting to see how benchmark loads times and all of that stuff are going to impact things in the future but while we're on the subject of amd i did also want to discuss something a little different and this is actually some really good news and it actually comes down to drivers. Now, at the end of the day, shiny new graphics cards are great, but as everyone knows, a driver is, well, kind of important because without a good graphics driver, you can have crashes, you can have lower performance, and so on and so on. And AMD have been pretty consistent in updating and improving the performance of its drivers, and NVIDIA as well, of course, even Intel. But I've been hearing now from a couple of different sources that there are going to be some substantial improvements to AMD's API driver stack. Now, I'm being asked to keep some specifics, well, not actually in public eye. So, obviously, this is for uh, either protection of people who have told me things or simply for, the, well, respecting that they just don't want me to tell stuff stuff in public but basically we will see substantial improvement in OpenCL, OpenGL, DirectX 11 and we've already seen some evidence of DirectX 11 improvements thanks to I believe it was Capframe X who did some benchmarking um, so again these are going to be major improvements to my understanding AMD are going to be doing substantial improvements to OpenGL and OpenCL and when you think about it from a logical perspective this makes a ton of sense these are areas where AMD have historically not done so well. DirectX 11 as well, we can of course really point to a plethora of games where AMD have just kind of fallen behind it. Clearly, if a game is older and it's designed around uh, DirectX 11, it's not such a big deal, but there are still a number of large 
triple a titles which do use directx 11 i think something like assassin's creed valhalla uses directx 11 so obviously this is really good and this has been an historic positive for nvidia they've done a lot of work over the years on their driver stack and the optimizations that nvidia have employed on opengl dx11 and so on and so on have definitely been absolutely wonderful like there's i'm not going to take anything away from nvidia they did really good work here and obviously there's a reason behind that they've been working on this stuff for so long so i've been hearing that the driver is called vanguard but i don't know whether that's going to be the final name it could be called you know kirby's playhouse for all i know when it finally launches but it's probably going to be a month a couple of months before this actually becomes you know publicly available so this is good obviously at the end of the day it's going to be free performance ultimately i don't think it's going to be specific to rdna3 i think it's going to be historical gpus as well i don't know how far back in history this is going to go i mean i would love for it to you know take a uh, improve like Vega, Polaris, and so on and so on. But it will be very interesting to see what happens to benchmarks. And I'm sure most of you will agree that this is not accidental timing, given AMD, of course, are going to be releasing their next generation of GPUs and so on and so on. So it's going to be very interesting stuff. And while we're keeping on the subject of uh, graphics cards and other shinies, let's quickly touch on a couple of things for NVIDIA. There has been an interesting leak, actually, that I missed a couple of days ago. And this actually is something really interesting because we have what appears to be the shroud of the RTX 4090 or 4090 Ti or whatever. Um, there's not a whole lot to say here. Ultimately, this could be fake. I believe the um, origin point of this was chip hell. Now, again, this could be an elaborate fake. The best way of describing this, I'm sure most of you guys would agree, is it's the 3090, but bigger. It's basically more of everything that is the 3090 or the 30 series design, which I'm okay with. Like, aesthetically, I think the 30 series actually looks pretty good. Um, and to be honest with you, I don't really care necessarily about the aesthetics as much. I know that's not the opinion of many people. I know a lot of people really care, but as long as the card itself is cool in terms of like, you know, it can actually help dissipate the heat output of this thing, I'm, I'm okay with it. Um, and yeah, it's quite interesting to say the least that NVIDIA have basically just gone, yeah, that works. Let's just use that. And I think again we kind of got hints that this was the direction they were going with the 3090 ti like you know i was reporting on the channel and many others were saying the main reason that the 3090 or one of the main reasons that they were even creating the 3090 ti is well real simple it's basically to give them kind of some um let's say experience as well as AIBs actually dissipating the heat for the next generation of cards, because we know that the 1390 Ti wasn't exactly sipping the old power juice. And the final thing that I'd like to cover today, just real quick, I suspect many of you are not going to be super interested in this, but it's the GTX 1630. Basically, it's a new entry-level GPU. There's not a whole lot to say about this one, other than it's pretty much, well, a GTX 16. Uh, card but with numerous cuts so we're looking at a grand total of 512 CUDA cores so this is combined with a 64-bit memory bus and only four gigabytes of memory so this is the kind of card that obviously is not going to be for high-end gaming it's going to handle maybe light esports titles this could be though at 65 watts TDP it could be a great option for like you know if you're running like a ryzen cpu and want a kind of lower end um nvidia card for like transcoding or you know kind of playback that type of thing it is based on turing so that's a 12 nm process of course there's not a whole lot to say about this i'll leave the video cards .com link in the video description um to my understanding this is not like you know the one reason that many people may consider this if it's a decent price and honestly i don't know what the price of this is going to be but if it's a decent price um the launch date for it is allegedly the 31st of may um one reason you could consider picking it up would be in preparation for kind of selling your um rtx 30 card you know kind of doing the old shuffle um just to remind you guys the rtx 40 series is apparently going to launch in july um 
that's according to Cuppy T7 Kimmy. I've heard multiple launch dates. I've heard like July and August and September. So I honestly don't know. I'm going to go with what he's saying at the moment, which is July, because he probably has better NVIDIA sources, to be honest, than I do. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that pans out. With this said, though, thank you very much for checking out this video. If you've enjoyed it, um, well, yeah, it's YouTube. You know what to do. Leave a likey, and I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.